Year 1066, Karel Ilvik lives and works in a small village. That day, he is working on something with his two friends. While they are working, they notice troops of Czech Prince Vratislav, the second who leads them. Curious, Karel wants to follow the troops and see where they are going, but his friends advise him against this idea and decide to return to the village. But the curious Karel takes an axe and sets off alone after Vratislav's troops. Finally, he reaches the battlefield and sees the lonely, wounded Prince of Bohemia and the invader in front of them who intends to kill him. He immediately rushes to help him. He killed the invaders but was injured himself. The prince was grateful to him for saving his life. Before long, part of the prince's army appeared. The prince told his knights what happened, and in exchange for saving Karel, he gives Karel a nobility and the title of Count. And that's how it all started. Karel did not forget about his friends and came back for them and took them to his court and gave them positions in his case. Yzik became his chancellor and Chastolov became his spymaster. Karel appointed Oldrich as his court physician. And now more about Karel himself, he is diligent, loyal, temperate and gregarious. He is also well versed in the art of diplomacy. Karel decided to deepen his knowledge of diplomacy even more. He also decided to be more thoughtful. Karel also needs a wife to extend his line. Knowing that Karel does not have a wife, Prince Vratislav proposes and allows him to marry Maria, a relative of his deceased wife from the Arpad dynasty. After a short wait, Karel received a reply with permission to enter into the marriage. And that's how Karel married Maria. On November 2nd, 1066, Karel received a letter from Prince Gerhard and decided to correspond with him. He decided to discuss the finer points of etiquette. But Prince Gerhard was not pleased with Karel's letter. On March 18th, 1067, Karel received an invitation to a hunting party. Since he likes spending time with people, he willingly agrees and chooses his caravan master and sets off on a hunt. When Carol and his caravan were traveling along the way, they saw a place where it was written, Here rests Saint Mazek. But he is not supported by Catholics. It looks like it's some local saint. Carol decided to celebrate this local hero and patronized him. On May 7th, 1067, Carol's caravan reaches the hunting party organized by Jaramir. There was a lot going on during the hunt, but in the end, nothing came of it. The deer most likely escaped, and there was no point in continuing the hunt. But after all, Carol was happy that he could spend time with people, and he felt that it helped him de-stress. When he started to return to his county, an argument occurred between him and his knight. Carol decided to show him that when someone calls him names, he learns a lesson. Carol defeats his knight in a duel, and the knight leaves his army. On September 29, 1067, Carol received the wonderful news that his wife Maria was pregnant. Carol was very happy because he will have son or daughter. He will be looking forward to the birth of his child. From distant England news comes of the conquest of England by William the Conqueror. Carol is fascinated that a prince and vassal of France managed to conquer all of England by himself. He is impressed by this achievement and would like to know more details about it. He will definitely be waiting for the next news from Europe. And finally, the moment Carol had been waiting for came. The birth of his first child, Viola. She is a small, adorable girl that Carol can't take his eyes off of. He is also proud of his wife for being able to go through childbirth. Karel decided to organize a feast in his castle in Jatek. He wants to celebrate the birth of his daughter Viola in this way. Various people will be invited, as well as Prince Bohemia Vratislav himself. The fiesta has begun. Unfortunately, the prince was unable to make it to the feast, but Karel received a letter from him in which he got a chance to become a steward at his court. Karel, who personally and by others is considered a talented diplomat and not a steward.
wonders for a moment whether he will be able to cope with this task. But eventually, he agrees and becomes a steward. After that, it turned out that there was a shortage of wine on the estuary. Carol ordered to find a merchant and buy wine from him. The guests were happy that their host made sure that wine was included at the feast. Carol also decided to talk to as many of his guests as possible. Unfortunately, there was a big quarrel at the feast which could have turned into a fight. But fortunately, thanks to Carol's diplomatic skills, nothing happened. The fiesta has finally come to an end. Carol was pleased with how it turned out and feels that he will organize more of them in the future. The guests were also pleased with how the feast went and will definitely come again if there is one. Carol feels that thanks to recent events he has improved his diplomacy again. Carol was advised by his priest and chancellor to write a letter to the Holy See to get ducats for the development of his county. Carol didn't have to wait long for an answer. The Pope agreed to give him the ducats. And with these ducats, he decided to build farm and fields in his county. On September 8, 1069, Carol fell ill. This is very bad because Carol does not want to leave his wife and daughter alone. His court physic unfortunately reduces the symptoms of his disease. Hello, this is Froggy. I hope you like this new series on the channel. Remember that if you like the video and want more, subscribe and like. And in the next episode, we will find out whether Carol will survive his illness. See you soon.